Hello guys and welcome to round 3 of this F1 2019 career mode. We've got a big day for us, our upgrades are finally here. We're going to make the car do a lot better than it has been in the previous races in Bahrain uh, and Australia. They were not particularly great, but um, you know, we've got a whole heap of upgrades coming onto the car and I'm really excited, uh, not so much anymore. Five upgrades and only one actually worked. Oh, that's a frustrating, that is painful to say the least. So we've had to recommission them to come for the next Grand Prix in Azerbaijan. But I mean, you know, in the last video, I talked up the upgrades, you know, the upgrades that are come, you know, we're going to be so much faster, um, maybe getting the points more regularly. And, you know, that just happened, which is just, it's not fair. Like, it's just so frustrating, but you never know. We'll take it on the chin. There's not much else we can do. It's not like we can magic them back and um, get them on the car any quicker than they can be. So we're going to have to do what we can and make the best of a bad situation. Now, qualifying here in China was in definitely interesting. Um, we did one lap on the beginning, and obviously you can see uh, started raining instantly. Started raining, so whoever came out first managed to get their lap times in, and that was really the, how it went. But you can see on the screen at the bottom, Sebastian Vettel is, well, he's not in the top 10, top 15. He's, he's plum last um, with Kimi Raikkonen, Lance Stroll, and the two Williams. So they didn't get their times in at the right time. So they're going to be eliminated from qualifying in Q1. So Sebastian Vettel's going to have to fight all his way back through the field. Uh, that's just insane. Sebastian Vettel is our surprise loser in qualifying, to say the least. Gasly was the one in Australia. And, um, you know, this time it's Sebastian Vettel. We didn't really have one in uh, Bahrain, I don't think. But um, So, you know, uh, Q2 uh, still wet. I went out on the intermediates now. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the best idea. Obviously, at this point, everyone was setting their times on intermediates. I so I thought. Uh, cross the line, uh, go P3, but you can see Magnussen, who I believe was the car behind me, um, he was behind me the entire time, and he set his fastest time on super softs. So I go back out on soft tires, you know, trying to sneak in. Uh, we did really well through practice, we was really quick. So I figured, you know, I'll put it on softs and uh, get through, and that way we've got, you know, a choice of tyre for the race, and we can go really deep into the Grand Prix, and then we can absolutely smash it. That, well, that was my thinking. We're in purple in Sector 1, uh, coming into the end of Sector 2, to start of Sector 3. Uh, we go green again, not quite purple, but only about five tenths off Hamilton at this point, so I figured, you know, this is fantastic. We go P2. Like, that's insane. You know, we're going to make it through on soft tyres, which is by far the best way and the best strategy to start the Grand Prix weekend. And, um, you know, getting that done, even coming in the pit lane, we're still sat comfortably P2 uh, as we get Will back into our garage. I'm thinking at this point, I'm sat here, hands off the steering wheel, thinking, you know what? This is a master stroke. We're going to get through on the soft tyres. Everyone else will be on super soft. We can go super deep into the Grand Prix. We might even be 10th, but at the same time, you know, we're going to be well up there. And, you know, we've got some extra tyres and stuff like that. What a genius move is what I was thinking at this point, right? So here's the issue. And they're going to put the TVs back on the screen. The session's ended by this point, I think. So we're going to cut to the end of qualifying in about 20 seconds or so, but we'll speed that up anyway. You can see miles ahead of everybody else. Um, a few people, cars are actually quite low. Leclerc, I don't think we'll actually get through into Q3. Into Q, uh, Q3. So that's quite interesting. So five seconds to go. Quite a few cars are out on track. Just look at this. What? on earth is that three seconds do you know what i mean i get it you know the track will improve and stuff like that but at the same time are you serious i should have just stayed out on track trundled around until it gone i'm not 100 percent sure if that was the same issue that we've had for the last few games where the automatic simulation just goes up massively. I know uh, Tom97, he's, he's talked about this a lot in his career modes on Twitter as well. Um, the, the bug, it's not really a bug, but at the same time, it, it just kills. You basically just have to sit there on track and just turn around with them, which obviously isn't ideal. Um, sometimes it happens when you go into the garage, sometimes it doesn't, but no, it was just super frustrating. You know, we had a really good pace, and you know, we get knocked, we're plum last, we're 15th place, which isn't great. But Mercedes 1-2 uh, here in China, our second row, uh, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. So obviously, Sebastian Vettel was 
Ruiz Palmer, he's at the back of the grid. Pierre Gasly with Nico Hulkenberg. Lando Norris making it into the um, top 10, which is fantastic. Magnussen and Perez also the same. Butler in P11 with Lucas Weber down in 13th place. And then ourselves in 15th. So all three of the rivals in a row. George Russell P17. And yeah, Sebastian Vettel P20. Just, just behind Kimi Raikkonen. So oh, it's, it's just disappointing. Obviously, you know, we start on softs, which is not what we wanted. But, you know, at the same time, it just it wasn't... It just wasn't fair. Like, I was absolutely gutted. We got out qualified by our teammate uh, to boot to that. But we're waiting for the lights to go out here in China. And we are underway. And we get a little bit better than we have in the previous race. You can see Kubica absolutely just steamroll us down into turn one. We're going to hang around the outside as best we can. It's always good to get on the outside if possible. Uh, it's all going to bunch up coming into this mid apex type. And you can see we've got Lucas Faber there. Butler just ahead of us. We're going to go up the side of Lucas Faber. We're going to make a little bit of contact, but not too much. Uh, Butler's just battling there, Perez. A little bit squirmy on the exit, but we managed to get past Weber, which is important. You know, he's our rival. We selected him as our rival, so that's one thing we needed to make sure of. And you can see we've got Lucas Butler going really deep into the uh, breaking zone there with Perez. Uh, Perez has not given up this position by any means. I can't help but feel when you get to the straight that the racing point is just going to absolutely zoom past him. But uh, for now, at least, Butler's doing a really solid job to hold on to that position against Perez through these tight, twisty sections. And, um, you know, Perez hasn't got really much of an answer. We're going to cruise up to the back of him and almost go into the back of Perez. It was really close. Managed to get on the brakes. Uh, if we snatched the brake there, we would have been absolutely totaled as we get a mass, massive, massive drive off that corner. And uh, we're going to look at Perez. I'm going to go down the inside of Butler to boot as well. There's so much going on at the moment. Trying to keep up is incredibly difficult. But you can see, you know, we get a little bit of a breathing space. Coming on to lap five, the cars are starting to pit. Um, it's going to pump us up into, I believe, P2 is where we're going to be. We're going to be just behind Hamilton in the standings currently. He's still got to pit, of course. And then, indeed, in the following lap, we ended up taking over the lead. But we have a red car behind us right now, and that is of Sebastian Vettel. So Vettel is actually going to try and make a move into this corner, which we're going to let that slide for a little bit. We're going to wait till we get to the DRS detection zone. And right there, we're going to absolutely nail the throttle down as hard as we can uh, without losing traction, of course, and um, get down the start of the straight. He's going to come back at us because we had a really acute line into that um, long right hand. I see he's going to start to overtake us. We'll hit that DRS button, and uh, we'll just sail all the way down to the hairpin, down the back straight. Uh, thank you very much, Seba. Uh, see you later. I'll uh, take that advantage off you. But following that, uh, Sebastian Vettel did something very similar. But um, this time, he wasn't able to make use of the DRS. He had it all to himself. And uh, we can't really fight that battle. But Lewis Hamilton is going to do the exact same thing that Vettel did. Try and overtake us into the left-hander. And uh, we'll do exactly what we did to him. This time, we got a little bit close. We was a little bit um, lucky to get the position back off Hamilton before we actually reached the actual straight itself. But managed to hold off Hamilton. We'll do the exact same again. He'll come past us, and as soon as we get to the DRS, we'll just carry on in our merry way and just, you know, just fight it a little bit. But there's no way we can hold back uh, Hamilton for much longer. Coming down to start finish rate, you can see the arrow is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. He's going to go all the way around our outside and absolutely do us into turn one. So fair play to Lewis there. He absolutely sent it around the outside, and, you know, we don't really have an argument for that. Uh, in all honesty, it was fantastic overtake, if I do say so. But, um, yeah, it's... It's def definitely difficult with Bottas as well. Bottas is looking very feisty coming down into turn one. He's actually going to do us. We're going to look at the inside of Bottas. He's going to go incredibly wide. So that is an opportunity to get down his inside. And we're not going to... We're not going to take no for an answer. We've actually damaged our front wing trying that overtake. We shouldn't really done that. We shouldn't be fighting a Mercedes. And um, he's actually going to end up getting away um, if we're not careful. He's going to look, see if we can make an attempt into this hairpin. And unfortunately, we're just not going to have the traction or the grip or the downforce now to um, make that work. Earlier on, probably would have worked. But, um, you know, currently not anymore. So we make our pit stop on lap 14. We go. Lando Norris coming out just a little bit short of uh, maybe what he would have hoped to overtake us in the pit lane but um, we come back out we've got a few more cars ahead of us we've got Charlie Leclerc coming out of the pit lane incredibly slow we're going to do what we did to Bottas down his inside uh, this time no contact wheel to wheel or anything like that and um, absolutely sent one uh, up his inside almost on the same levels as what we did to Hamilton but um, probably not as bad we've got Leclerc now behind us now he's smart he didn't bother overtaking us into that corner. He doesn't need to because we just make a stupid error and let Leclerc go and also let Verstappen go. We're going to have the inside line, so we might be able to get the position back off Verstappen if we're careful, but at the same time, we're not going to get DRS, I don't think. So we're going to be in... We actually do indeed get DRS, which is fantastic. We get that on, I believe, probably Leclerc. So Leclerc's going to be sitting duck. We're going to get past Verstappen because 
you got a better run than him. We're closing up to Leclerc so, so much. We'd have to send it into this breaking zone, down to the inside, Verstappen all the way on the outside, Leclerc in the middle, and how we had no contact there, I do not know. But we managed to get the move done on uh, Leclerc. You see from his perspective and from the broadcast shot, Leclerc gets sandwiched in between uh, Toro Rosso and a Red Bull. Um, down the inside we go, around the outside goes Max. Um, Leclerc managed to hold, hold off Max, but obviously that means we sail up past and uh, go around him. But... You know, it's absolutely mental. This time we're battling the Claire again. He's on the inside, we're on the outside. Go into the grass, we're going to bang tyres just a little bit. Um, we got a little bit squirmy while taking our, uh, putting a tyre on the grass. But he's going to come back at us because we've got an awful exit. And there goes the Claire. We're going to go deep and try and go around. But um, we just don't have the downforce for it, unfortunately. We managed to hold off Max just a little bit. He is there or thereabouts. We're going to push him to the outside and uh, try and hold this position as best we can. But we just can't hold it. We physically can't with this damage to our front wing that we got from Bottas, which is super frustrating. It was a good little battle. And now the second Red Bull, Pierre Gasly is trying to make a meal of us as we get to the end of the Grand Prix. We're going to hold it down the inside and um, almost bang tyres there. It was very, very close between ourselves and Pierre. But with Pierre, in this case, we can't let him go. We're fighting for um, a race scene. You can see how far wide we've gone. We are really starting to struggle with this damage and it's just hurting our tyres massively. Gasly's has got DRS and he's going to have to just absolutely gun it down the start finish straight. We've got Perez on the left-hand side, who fancies a go. We're going to cut him off, and we have to go all the way around Pierre, but Pierre looks like he's locked up a little bit. So we're going to get the switch back on Pierre Gasly. A fantastic move there, and decision from us. We make a little bit of contact as he comes back onto our race, and I don't think he expected us to actually come over um, as much as we did. But on the penultimate lap, you can see that proximity arrow got red there. Um, very, very scary moments on the break, and I thought I was going to get um, spun into. But um, we managed to hold off just about. Um, Perez actually ended up getting past Pierre, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, for sure, we absolutely need to hold off Pierre if we want any chance to get in that Red Bull seat. If we can outperform him, we've, I think we've outperformed him possibly. This might be the first time. I feel like in qualifying, obviously, we've definitely outqualified him before. But in terms of actual races, this is the first time. And, you know, we've gotten one up on Pierre, which is fantastic for us, of course. You know, if we want that Red Bull seat. We've got to do everything in our power to uh, make it possible that that's actually going to be a thing. But Lewis Hamilton wins third race in a row. Um, it's uh, well, Mercedes obviously won the third race in a row. Uh, this time Vettel actually got on the podium in P2, which is a little bit nicer than obviously seeing Mercedes 1-2, Mercedes 1-2, Mercedes 1-2. So, Ferrari obviously do have some kind of pace, whether that can form into a win, we all have to see. But uh, James Allison holding the trophy there. Seb actually very happy with P2, which is uh, nice to see. Bottas uh, a bit a bit annoyed with P3, uh, not celebrating as much as his teammate. But as a whole, that race was incredibly fun, especially towards the end. You know, it was really difficult to hold on to those tyres um, with the downforce. Our teammate almost getting into the points, but um, you know, Verstappen fourth, Leclerc fifth, ourselves I believe that's sixth. It's really hard to say, but interview time, I guess. And You're now ahead of your old F2 rival in the championship. That must. Oh, for sure. I mean, we've all come from F2 last year and um, it's going to be difficult to compare because of the machinery we're in, all different. But, you know, the premise is the same. I think we're pretty close in terms of car performance. So it's good. It's good to be ahead of them. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? I did. But at the same time, I can't help but feel disappointed with, you know, we qualified so far back. I'm not saying we could have, you know, taken the fight to Leclerc and Verstappen, but probably could have been a lot more comfortable this race than... Uh, than we was towards Yen, Fayen, Pierre and uh, Sergio, of course. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. I'd hope so. I'm kind of expecting a call from uh, Dr. Helmet after this race, uh, battling with Pierre like that. But um, yeah, you know, as a whole, it was it was, it was was good fun. And so far, so good, I suppose. We'll have to see later in the season if we can improve and hopefully uh, keep scoring points. Great. Well, that's everything. So that is the Chinese Grand Prix done and dusty. You can see our comparison to our rivals. We've got to catch up to Lucas Faber after qualifying. Uh, obviously didn't help us out very much. So, But, you know, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please make sure you slap a like on it. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. We're pumping these videos out really, really often, uh, which is fantastic if you like seeing F1 2019 career mode and other series. But that's a bit of it for me, guys. I'll see you in Baku for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.